So I'm looking at one of these farm tech timers again. I've done these multiple times in the past. I don't always record videos about these things when I'm working on them because well, I've worked on many of them. This one came in saying it's got an issue with one of the poles not communicating to the console. So let's just try this out. I already have tried this out but I'm going to do it for the purpose of the camera. So over here we've got one pole. This is the black pole. This is an infrared transmitter. I don't think you can see the LEDs on there. No, not on this camera. Sometimes you can see them. So that's an infrared transmitter. It's like a light curtain. Then on the opposite side over here, I'll zoom out. This is a red pole. I've got two red poles. This one's turned side on. I don't know where you can see it here, but it's got a green light on there. Because that's seeing the light curtain. Let's grab the timer console. And if I stick my hand through there, it triggers no problem whatsoever. The timer has started. Now if I turn this pole around, so it's also seeing the signal. And I'll stick my hand through there. Nothing happens. Now, forget this one, I'm going to turn that one away. Once it's triggered one pole, it should be triggering off the other one after that, right? See that red and green switching? Okay, so the actual light curtain itself is working, but it's not triggering the timer. There's a few reasons that could actually happen. One is that someone somehow misprogrammed it and they've lost the programming for this particular pole because these are coded poles, they actually have code on them. When they transmit to the consoles, they're tied together as a set. Someone can actually maybe go into the settings accidentally break that. Okay, so that's the first thing I thought of, right, maybe it's an issue with that. So let's go and go into the diagnostic section here. See that? So this is the channels. Now, New Zealand only has channel 5, 6 and 7. Whereas our channels aren't used because it's FCC rules and that sort of stuff. RF radio yours. Now, unfortunately, I'm blocking the beam, so let's move these poles closer together. So I'm not blocking the beam anymore. If I'm triggering the one which isn't working, there's nothing showing up. And if I spin the other pole around, see that? F come up. Trigger it again, see? That's that one triggering. So the pole which is working is triggering with a really strong signal. F is the maximum it can be because it's only like you know one half feet away. So that's not surprising. But the pole which isn't triggering is not triggering at all. There's no radio signal coming out of that pole. So it's not just a case of it being coded badly, it's actually not transmitting. This should be interesting. So I'm just playing with my spectrum analyzer here. I've got both poles set up. You'll see that I've got a peak hole shown there. This is the one which is working. You can see it's popping up. All right. And that's working absolutely fine. That triggers a timer. Now, if I get the other pole, don't know, wait. One which isn't working. You see it's also working. And it's not stopping the timer. So the timer isn't seeing this pole, but it is definitely transmitting, and it's transmitting on the right frequencies because it's exactly the same as the other pole and the amplitude is the same this just gets more and more curious what's going on? well that's an interesting discovery so I've used these before to do testing and diagnosis like on that secondary menu that one I showed you before with all the numbers there which tells you the channels and checks for activity on the channels as you saw there was nothing showing up on that pole which wasn't giving a transmission and on the spectrum analyzer it was showing up which was weird and I've done this before on other things like at events, and we've seen other light curtains popping up which aren't programmed into this, right? So not programmed in, and it will show them popping up. So I'm really surprised that it didn't show it coming up. It's um, a programming issue. I've just done some more digging. Basically, there's an advanced menu here. If you go into that first, actually, I'll, I'll come back out, I'll show you. So push that, advanced menu, go in there. Go through, our usage should be automatic, by the way. Actually, I'll show you that. Our usage should be set automatic. Program eyes and hand switch. Yes, program I1. This is how you tie the poles to the console. So program I1. So when you push down the button, you'll be waiting for a beam to be broken. So I move this out of the way. Currently we've got a green light. Okay. I'm going to push in the button. It's waiting. I break that beam to bed, right? 2BED is the code in that pole. That's one which wasn't working before. And now it's prompting me to do line number two. So I'm going to turn this one away. Turn this one towards it. So that one's on. I'm going to push enter. Break the beam. That says 2BF1. That was programmed. Now once they're in there, stop. Just push the set button to get out. 
it looks like it has forgotten it. That's what it appears to be. Let me just uh, go back into the actual RF testing and we'll see if it comes up. So, first one there's come up as F, like it was before. Or is it? No, it's not. That one's not coming up. It's beepy, but it's showing zero. Do this one. That's also showing zero. That's interesting. Is it over driving the input? That's saying E as well. Ah, maybe F isn't the highest value. Maybe zero is the highest value because it goes over scale. I mean, F is showing up on here now. Before it's doing zeros. It just stayed at zero all the time, like that. So now it's showing zero all the time. And I'm really close. Right, so I guess it's overdriving the front end of this thing, and so it's going out of range. So it's potentially a firmware bug on this. If it goes too strong a signal, it says zero instead of F. Yeah. There's a learning experience for you. There are some other issues I need to do. This pole here doesn't turn off. The pole's off, but the red light's still on. I've got to fix that. I'm not going to do a video about that. I've done it before. It's, it's straightforward. Look at my other videos. You want to see how to fix that. But I'm still going to pull these things apart, service them, inspect them. All the usual stuff I do when I get a set of poles in to do servicing on. So I'll give them a thorough check over. But for some reason the pole was no longer coded to the timer. Now does that mean that there's a potential issue here? The place that has these timers, they may have more than one set. They might have two sets of timers. So there's a chance that they've got two of the poles mixed up between the two sets. I've just got this set working. But now the other set will have one pole that doesn't work as well. That's quite likely. 11707, 11709. So though the numbers are very close together, if there was two sets of gear provided at the same time, they might be sequential numbers. The black poles have sequential numbers, so it's still possible it's been mixed up. So as part of my usual servicing, I pull things apart and check them, and this is why. So this console has got wet, it's got a whole bunch of liquid damage. See all these pins down here, all got liquid damage on. Come over here, all this oscillator section, this, it's all got liquid damage. That's amazing, it's actually still working with that. I would have thought it would have killed the oscillator, but it's all around here. It's up there as well. Top side's looking okay. But there's also some Underneath this chip, so underneath this display here, there's a chip which drives it. You can just sort of see it between the pins there. I don't think you can see it on camera. I can try and get in there, but I can actually see there's some fluffy stuff on the pins of that chip. You can just see it there. It's looking a bit white on those pins as well. So I've got to take the display out and clean up all that corrosion on that chip as well. Um, yeah. This is why these things must not get wet. So I've lifted the display off. There's a chip and you can see the corrosion on those pins there. So yep, yeah, that definitely needed sorting out. Also got some over here too. So I've just brushed off over here and it's mostly come off. But I'm still going to need to reflow these just to make sure the corrosion's stopped. Alright, so that's all cleaned up. Let's clean that connection up there. That chip there is all cleaned up now. All around there is all cleaned up. end up there so might need to get some more flux off there but I think it's basically done well I've just serviced everything and I've gone back to retest because I always do that sure enough it's broken again now interestingly as you saw before it wasn't working I, I tested the RF and it worked then I reprogrammed it and it worked now I can't reprogram it so it's not actually detecting it now so I think this pole must have an intermittent issue with the RF system. One thing I haven't done is reflow the audio RF circuitry. Excuse the cat. So I think I might need to pull this apart again, reflow all the RF stuff, and see if that brings it back, because right now it's like, it isn't there. So if I go into program this pole, 11709 is where I've just got the issue. It's that one, so I'm programming I2. This is I number two. Doesn't come up. Doesn't show it registering. There's nothing there. I think I'm going to check the RF again. So, checking the RF again. 
nothing showing up. Turn on the other pole. There you go. There's the other pole triggering. That one's working. This one, nothing happening. Right. It's obviously an intermittent fault, which is always the best kind. So I'm just probing around on this thing, just checking for stuff. I've checked for the inductors on the RF system, which are up here. I've checked those. They'll check out OK. They all connect as they should. So those are all fine. I've visually checked this for the second time. Can't see anything wrong. I've just checked the voltage on the output of this regulator here, which is that top pin there. That's 3.3 volts coming out, so that's fine. That's the power supply for that RF chip, which is the SX1231, as you can see. And, of course, I just tested it again just now, and it's outputting RF. So it's got some kind of intermittent issue, but I need to try and figure out what is causing that intermittent state, which is always great fun. Trying to find out why things don't always work. Who doesn't enjoy doing that? So I'm just going to do some more messing around, see if I can make it fault or not. I might try hot air and free spray and stuff like that and see if I can get any progress with detecting at least where it is. So I tried heating it, I've tried cooling it, I've tried cooling it again. So I went cold first, didn't trigger it to fail because currently it's working, of course. So then I heated it, that didn't trigger it to fail, so I cooled it again, still no failure. So it doesn't seem to be a thermal issue. At least not an obvious one. I guess I can just reflow stuff and just see if that resolves anything. But in fact, that is currently working right now. Well, that's an issue because when it fails, I don't know when it's going to be. I'd like it to actually be failed completely so now I can try and troubleshoot what's not working. Yeah. So I'm just going around resoldering stuff manually with a soldering iron before I go around with the hot air and just reseat stuff. And I just got to this resistor here, which is one of the program resistors for the frequencies. And. I touched one end of it and it just lifted up. That end is detached. See that? It's like it's maybe it's cracked. I just touched one end and it moved. And that shouldn't happen. So I already tested the value and made sure that it's actually reading OK in circuit. The value was OK. Just like maybe this wasn't soldered very well. That could be the problem. So I've reflowed absolutely everything. I've done all the RF stuff. The actual IC here, reflowed all of this circuitry up here just to be absolutely sure. Got this level shifter here which I've reflowed as well, done all that. All that circuitry there, I haven't done that bit because that doesn't have a problem. I believe that the issue was that resistor right there. I don't trust it, I think it's actually corroded on the end. So watch this. One probe on that end of that resistor. But if I go to the pad, pad there pad here, get you 1.1 meg and if I go to the resistor end 67k it's like yeah this resistor's bad this would be what's wrong well that resistor replaced let's retest should get about 51k or maybe slightly less 51k perfect we check, check that down the other end here. We've got this via here, we'll check there just to make sure. Yep, 51k. Sweet, that's fixed. I bet that'll be it. Right, let's test this again. Let's roll this around and see if it triggers. There we go, that triggered. And again, and again, and again. Yep, that's working. Now the question is, will it keep working? I hope so. So I was originally testing at 9 volts, now I'm just retesting again at 5.3 volts, which this thing thinks is a low battery. Let's re-trigger. Yeah, that's still working. Even with low current, or low voltage, it's still working. So the voltage range isn't affecting anything. These are voltage regulated down to 5 volts, so they're using LDOs. Even at 5.3 volts, it may not be having that much of an effect on it, really. We'll put it back together and see where it keeps working. Right, I've just reprogrammed them just to be absolutely sure. Just to have any frequency drift or anything which may have changed by me cleaning up the RF section. And the frequency did drift very slightly by about 1 kilohertz, apparently. That's fine. It's nothing on these things. So, let's check it. Now I've got both here side by side with the one black pole, which means it will trigger 
for both of them at the same time. Right, so that one's not triggering right now because that's the start of one. Do this one and that's stopping it. So starting and stopping is currently working. Brilliant. So here's the resistor. Can you see anything wrong with that? Flip it over. How about now? Notice something missing. The little contact area on one side is gone. So that around. You can see that's got one. Turn it around. On the very end, very end, it's like dirty, and there's no contact pad. I think it's just a little bit of contact on the very top of it, which is a little bit silver, just there. So yeah, I think that is bad. Well, we know it's bad, but uh, that was just a was probably what was causing that problem. So far, it's behaving. So if you found it interesting, other videos to watch down below. Subscribe over here if you're interested in watching more of my videos in the future. And there's a Patreon support link over here, which allows you to support the channel a couple of dollars a month. It helps me to buy things to do repairs on and to create video content for you. Catch you later.